We greet the whole church with the peace of the Lord Jesus. In reverence to reading the word of the Lord, we are going to stand up. Second Samuel, Old Testament. Second Samuel 9. Verse 4 and 5. 2 <coughs> Samuel, verse 4 and 5. Is already here on the projection? He says this, the following. So the king said to him, Where is he? And Ziba said to the king, Indeed, he is in the house of Machir, the son of Emiel in Lodebar. Then King David sent and brought him out of the house of Machir, the son of Emiel, from Lodebar. Lord, we praise you. Your holy name, for the fellowship with the Holy Spirit, we ask that through your word, you may bless your people. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. There's a song that we wanted to sing. Every being who lives.
Glory to God. There's a song that we sang that says the following. Every promise of the word that the Lord said will be fulfilled. And every covenant, every alliance, every agreement made in the presence of God, every agreement, every covenant that has a seal from God cannot be broken. The word said that two men made a covenant, covenant, an agreement. And David and Jonathan, son uh, of Saul. And it was a covenant of love. The basis of this covenant and of this pact was love that one had for another. And the word says, my brethren, it is written. Now, so First Samuel, that Jonathan, Genesis, he loved David with all the love of his soul. And Jonathan, once, he was used to deliver David from the persecution of the father of Jonathan, Saul. And after this deliverance, and they, after this deliverance, they had made a covenant, and God was the judge of this covenant, of this agreement, this alliance. And this covenant perpetuated. May the it is written, the Lord may be perpetually between you and I, between my seed and your seed. And in the Bible, in the New Testament, we will find another covenant that is similar to this one, an agreement that is similar to this one, between Jesus and the church. between Jesus and the Christian. And he says the following, Believe in Jesus as is written in the Bible, and you will be saved, you and your household. And we can see that the benefits are not only for the person that makes the covenant, but also for their entire household and their, all their families and their descendants. The word of the Lord, my brethren, says that Jonathan, he died. Jonathan ha died. And we might think, uh, wow, if Jonathan died, then the covenant lost its uh, worth. Because it, one of the people was no longer present. But the covenant had been sealed by the Lord at a stamp from the Lord. So it was perpetual. It is eternal. It will last forever. Jonathan died, but David but David was still alive. In David, in what he didn't fail and what he didn't sin, he is a symbol of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And because Jesus is alive and because he lives, I can't believe on the, the tomorrow. Because he lives, I can have hope. Because he lives, I can have the assurance that a covenant is still standing. Because the covenant is perpetual, it's forever, for, for the entire eternity. And that was exactly what happened. David was now king. Now he was sovereign, he was king. And when the Lord Jesus comes into the situation in our lives, in our homes, in our household, in our city, in our country, when he becomes sovereign, he becomes a king, the Lord, he begins 
to remember our descendants, our children. And tonight entered a woman here. She's here with us. He came afflicted, anguished, because for her, her son is almost dead. He's not dead, but he's almost dead. And Phibothet, the son of Jonathan, he said, I'm dead dog. If you're dead, it's what does Jesus do? He resurrects. But if you're, if you're almost dead, he puts you back on your feet. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And the Lord was showing through a spiritual gift that her son was almost dead. That she had disappointment during the day. She came to the church with a little resistance in her heart. And the Lord was showing that she needed to deliver her, put her son at God's feet. My brother, when there is no solution for me and for you to resolve, give it to God. He will have a solution. When Anna came, Hannah came to the house of the Lord with an affliction, anguish in her heart, when the little Samuel was born, she gave Samuel, she said, he's going to be here for God to take care of him throughout the days of his life. And now read in the Bible who Samuel was. Was the servant of God that anointed King David. And the Bible says, my brethren, about Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth was the son of this man that made a covenant with King David. When he was Mephibosheth was small, he fell of the hand of the caretaker of that child. He became lame from both legs. He could not walk normally. The name Mephibosheth means, one of the translations means shame. You can imagine if your son, if your name meant shame, you can imagine, that would be a shame. He was a son of a prince, but he was a shame. And sometimes, there are many children like this, and they feel ashamed. They cannot walk. They are lame from both legs. Very complicated situation. Peace, people pass by that man. He may be a prince, but nobody recognizes him as a prince. No, give, no one gives him the proper worth. Nobody honors him as a prince. Sometimes we are going through a situation like this, exactly that situation, a situation of shame, of dishonor, of we are being despised. But there is a covenant. There is an alliance. There is an agreement. And this covenant, this agreement, is eternal. There's a text in the Bible, I always mention it, that says the following. Could a mother forget about her own son? But even if she f did, I will still not forget about you. God, it's God's saying. When David, he received a kingdom, he became king, he remembered the covenant he had made with Jonathan son of, of Saul. He remember, he used of um, mercy with his descendants. Many who are here to, tonight are being benefited with this mercy, with this love, with this mercy, with this favor, this mercy from the Lord from our family members, from one of our predecessors that did in the same way as 
uh, they made a covenant with the Lord Jesus. They have already departed to eternity, but the covenant remains to this day. In Mephibosheth, which means shame, he inhabited in a place called Lodebar, which means dry field, dry pastures. So there, there was not enough food in that area. He lived in a land that was despised of pain and suffering, of anguish, of affliction, a place of scarcity, of water, of food. He was going through the situation. He was living as a beggar, being helped by others, living off of the favors from others. He was being taken care of Aliel, the son of Abiel. Oh, thank God there was still someone that would take care of him. But it was a very difficult situation. How many times haven't we gone through situations like this? How many times? Living off of favors in the house of others, even being a bothersome to others, a, a very discomfortable situation, you cannot work, you depend exclusively of others. And I will ask you, my brother and sister, what kind of life is this? What is this? Who was, who was created to live in a situation like this? That's shame. That's truly a shame. The name was identifying the situation in which he was living. Shame. But the word of the Lord says that the king He remembered Mephibosheth. Nobody remembered Mephibosheth. Can you remember in this situation right now? I can't remember someone that is living in this situation at exact, this exact moment. And even more than that, I have this capacity, this ability to bring this person that's been despised, living a, a life of misery, lame, only to give us trouble. Isn't it true? Only to give us trouble. But the word says that Jonathan loved David. But there is something else. David also loved Jonathan. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And he didn't forget about, about Jonathan's descendants. We can say we love God. But he loved us first. Even if someone has been despised, even if you have been despised, even if I have been despised, where was I? Where were you? There's a song that said, Where would I be if you were not the hand of the Lord? I was alone in the world. Jesus was able to reach me. It was exactly that story of Mephibosheth, of a man that had been reached by the grace, by the favor, by the mercy and love, the unconditional love of God. Because sometimes we love conditionally. We may even uh, love with selfish interests. Isn't it true? I've been married for 33 years. That's how it is. We love people because of our personal self-interests. However, the love of God is unconditional. Sometimes a person marries with someone else because they say, well, because it's going to help out, it's going to contribute. So then I can get a green card, a citizenship. Or maybe I will prosper in life uh, so I can be this or that. Maybe I'll, I'll get married to this 
sister because she's going to help me to become a minister, right? But how can somebody get married with someone in this situation? He has nothing to offer. But my brethren, we had nothing to offer to the Lord. You will find nothing that is worth in me, Lord. Is of worth. There is no reason for God to call me. There is no reason. There was no reason for David to call me Fibosheth. There was no reason. He had nothing to offer. In the same way that I uh, and the entire humanity, we don't have anything to offer to God. What we can offer God is just headaches. I gave a headache, a lot of headache to God in the past, and I continue to give Him trouble. And that proves the unconditional love of God to my life, to our life, to our lives. And the Bible says, my brethren, that the king asked, and he was missing in this table, he was missing someone. He was missing a descendant of Jonathan, of the one who had made a covenant and a pact with David. And tonight we can say that God is missing someone, the son, the son of Jonathan, a son that is part of a covenant of God, a son of a servant of God, a prince. He was missing that person on his table. And the word says, my brethren, that he asked, Is there someone from the house of Jonathan here? Is there someone that is not in my presence, that is not eating off of my table? And then they answered to David, they said, there is a man. <coughs> His name is Shame. He is in a place called Dry Pastures. And you know what the king s said? Call him. You know, my brethren, why, you know why you're here? Because the king asked to call you. You know why we're here tonight? Because the king asked to call me. We are all we were all here like Mephibosheth in Lodebar. We were all away from the project of God. Away from the city of God. Away from the presence of God and the presence of the king. They were distant from Jerusalem. They were distant from the palace of the king. They were distant from the king. They could not go to Jerusalem. They could not walk. The sin in the life of a man, crippled man, man cannot walk to Jerusalem. He cannot enter into the presence of the king if the, instead, unless the king calls him. Remember the king, the queen Esther. She could not enter the presence of the king unless the king called her and pointed his scepter to her. But Apostle Paul said, we have boldness to enter the presence of the king, the center of a God, through the precious blood of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's the covenant. That's the alliance. That's the covenant of God between yours and our lives. And the king said, where is it? Where is he? Where is Mephibosheth? Where is the one that I want to um, offer my my blessing? I want the one who want I want to bless. Where is the one the one that I want to be present at my table and I want to eat bread in the same table as I? Where is he? The king wanted to reach. Reach out to him. And the word says, the king then sent King David. There was an order from the king to bring Mephibosheth to his presence. 
and was at this moment an order from God to bring him to his presence so that you could be in this place because God wants to operate he wants to change your life because the one who is in the presence of God who was in Christ is a new creature in God everything is being made new blessed be the name of the Lord and the word says that the God gave an order he ordered for his uh, for them to bring Mephibosheth to his presence and now the, the king took him from the place where he was he didn't say get up and go there no he took him from that place he said no come here my friend you you're no longer in that place you are no longer in Lodabar on you are not your place is not in, in Lodabar the, the dry pasture anymore in the place of suffering and affliction no your place now is in the presence of the king your present your place my brother is in the house of the Lord in the dwelling of the king there is a place in the table of the king for your life the king asked to call you God wants to use of mercy towards your life and he says the following my brethren be, do not be afraid do not fear sometimes when the Lord calls someone to a presence when the Lord calls us we think that is for a judgment a sentence a judgment that's not what it is because to sentence to death you just leave them to on the low the bar you have already been sentenced Jesus didn't come to condemn and but he came to save because condemned we were already were he didn't come to bring affliction or anguish because affliction and anguish he already had. He came to do a new thing, something different to change the situation. And that individual came afraid and maybe you entered in the house of the Lord afraid. And the Lord told to that man, do not fear. For I will surely show you kindness of, of grace, of love and favor and mercy because God loves you King David loved the descendants of Jonathan King David loves our descendants our children, you know my sister do not, be do not worry, the Lord is taking care of your son He's also calling your son to his presence to be at his table, to be in his house and, and take part in his kingdom. And he said more things to that man. I will restore to you all the land of Saul. Salvation, like we say, is a complete project. He brought him to his presence. He said, you're going to be here in my house. You eat and drink and sleep and rest in my house you'll be well taken care of like a prince and even more your financial life your professional life your lands the things that you lost that were abandoned abandoned that you used to have but you no longer have you know what the law the king told him i'm going to restore it to you i'm going to give it all back to you my brother in the presence of the Lord, we do not lose anything. We only earn things. That's what the Bible says. We are more than victorious. It's only victories. And it says the following. And, and you shall eat bread at my table continually. My brethren, the greatest gift, the greatest benefit is not to have a uh, uh, land that is being restored to us is not material blessings, it's not cure or deliverance this is not the greatest benefit every person that came to the presence of the king received this type of benefit every person that came to the presence of Jesus received this kind of benefit, all of them without exception because God does not choose a person over another whoever comes to me I will never throw away everyone 
were blessed, was blessed, and even those that didn't come to Jesus also received the blessing. The were the ones that were carried to Jesus' presence. They all received the blessing. All of them, all of us, tonight are receiving a blessing from the King. The Lord is storing many things in the life of many who are here, but this is not the most important. This is not the most important. You know what is the most important, my brother or sister, is to. You shall eat bread at my table continually. Is to be daily in the presence of the King. That's what the King was saying. From this day forward, you will be to every day in my presence. Every day will take part on my table, on banquet. And David says, "Prepare a table in the presence of my enemies." He says this on Psalms 23, this about this banquet. He speaks of a place of honor. The one that was dishonored is now honored. The one that is humiliated is now being exalted. Who does this? Is the king? Was an order from the king? Was a call from the king? So that you could be continuing in his presence in his house. There is a call from God, my brother and sister, to yours, to mine, to our lives. You are being called. You are being brought to this place. In the same way that I have been brought to this place, because God wants to use with you and towards me and to anyone, all of us, with His with kindness, because God wants to honor the King. Wants to honor us. The king wants to exalt you. The king wants to remove you from a place of pain, of anguish, lodabar, of dry pastures, to green pastures. Blessed be the name of the Lord. To give refreshing of the soul. To remove anguish, sadness, pain, suffering, shame, and affliction. Because that's the desire of the king. That's the desire of the Lord. Towards your life, my brother and sister, He wants to use of kindness, grace, love, and favor and mercy. Amen. The Lord has shown tonight. Amen. He came here, and His garments were worn out. He was in a difficult situation. It was identified a person, a beggar. He was identified as a beggar. He came hungry to this place, and it's been many days since he last ate. And when he entered, and there was a table, there was the tables prepared. There was a great abundance of uh, food, he, and he was invited, and he sat down at the table, and he was able, together with the king, eat of. The, this food, and this is the call of the Lord towards your life, so that you may be continually eating at His table. Amen.
Hallelujah. The church will stand up. We praise the Lord. We're thankful because one day you look toward our lives with our eyes on mercy, you rescued us, brought us to your presence, mm. gave a place on the table. That's why we praise you, Lord, give you honors. Because continually we have eaten bread in this place. The continual bread of life you have quenched our thirst and satisfied our hunger. We have, bring, we have brought peace, comfort, refreshing, and joy. We have restored us in your presence. We have restored our lives. We want to praise you and glorify you, Lord. Because one day, remember our lives. We have mercy to each one of us. Lord, we adore you for your grace, for your love, unconditional. And we plead to you, Lord, that you may receive our love and adoration, all your gratitude. We want to praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. In your name we say, the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, and sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit, with the peace of God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The brethren may sit down. If the brethren desire a prayer, you are here tonight. If you want a clarification, clarification of the word, just raise your hand so we can identify you. And then we will we'll give you the proper assistance. We have services on Thursdays at 8 at the night. Prayer service on Saturday 7.30. And Sunday in the morning, 10.30 in the morning, Sunday school. And 7.30, you will have another service. Once again, you are invited to come again. Amen.